Hi everyone. Today I'm going to take you through the case study of Cafe Coffee Day. This case study describes the emergence of CCD as the leading coffee chain in India with over 1400 cafes in India. In early 2013, Starbucks, the world's leading coffee chain company, opened its first 11 outlets in India's metropolitan cities with association of local giant Tata and promises of national rollout. CCD management debated whether there was plenty of room for both Starbucks and CCD in India's large growing market or whether Starbucks entry required CCD to respond more assertively. So now before moving to this case study, I would request you to subscribe 5 minutes learning channel in YouTube so that you can get my recent case study video updates on time. Also, this video is enabled with English subtitles for your better understanding. Now let's move to the case study. In the year October 2012, US-based Starbucks coffee company entered the Indian market. Over the next six months, it opened 11 stores in Mumbai and Delhi. Starbucks was the world's largest coffee chain company with over 18,000 outlets across 62 countries. Starbucks had entered India through a joint venture with the Tata Group, which is India's largest business conglomerate, giving its access to the coffee plantation as well as premium real estate. Despite its premium pricing, Starbucks received an overwhelming response from Indian consumers. So Mr. VG Siddhartha, founder and chairman of Coffee Coffee Day and the director of CCD, Mr. Venu Madhav, had plenty of experience in beating the global brands in India, like Costa from the UK, Labaza from Italy, Gloria Jeans from Australia. All these companies had already struggled to make significant inroads in the Indian market. Yet Siddhartha and Madhav wondered if Starbucks might be different. To deliver on their vision, CCD focused on full-fledged cafes targeting young people between the age group of 15 and 30, mainly focusing on India's middle and upper middle class and positioning themselves as a place between home and work in order to hang out with friends. CCD cafes were typically 800 to 1000 square feet in area with a storefront that displayed the company's bright red logo also had a tagline, a lot can happen over a coffee. Apart from classic coffees, they also offered a range of cold coffees and iced drinks that were popular among teenagers and young customers. Food items like ready-to-eat sandwiches and burgers, Indian snacks like chicken tikka sandwiches, samosas were also served in CCDs. CCD cafes often had jukeboxes and sold merchandises like t-shirts, bags, pens, and coffee filters. CCD located its outlets in urban areas with large young populations such as high streets, malls, educational institutions, campuses of information technology, and BPO firms. They also opened outlets simultaneously in multiple cities. Their strategy was to seed the cafe culture rapidly in different cities and accelerate the establishment of the brand. CCD ensured that its cafes were reasonably priced. Historically, CCD stayed away from mass media advertising and focused instead on targeted promotional activities. For instance, to increase footprint, cafes would sell tickets for rock concerts and create contests around popular television shows and youth-oriented brands with winners receiving merchandise and paid trips. Coffee Day had a vertically integrated business model. The company sourced coffees from its own 11,000 acres of plantations, employing around 3,000 plantation workers and managing another 3,000 acres owned by other growers. It also operated two curing mills with a total capacity of 70,000 tons, the largest in India, and a roasting and a blending facility altogether. 
Since they produce their own coffees, it becomes very easy for them to take the best coffee and store it for themselves rather than buying it from the market. Consumers also see them as a coffee experts. Coffee Day also manufacturing its own coffee vending machines and cafe furnitures and procured equipment such as air conditioners, ovens and pastry coolers nationally. Management estimated that furniture, for example, was 15 to 20 percent of the capital cost for a store and internally sourced furniture could save over 25 percent compared to volume wholesale purchases. Similarly, it manufactures its own coffee vending machine at a cost of approximately $2,000 compared to $7,000 for an imported machine. CCD owned its cafes rather than franchising them to ensure quality control. Moreover, retail locations were critical. Staffing was equally critical in the cafe business. CCD hired its cafe staff directly on to its roles rather than contracting them through third parties. The company also ran a residential hospitality college where over a six month period at a cost of $900 each, it trained village youth in cafe operations and taught them functional English. The college contributed approximately 2,000 of CCD's 7,500 cafe staff in the year 2013. And executives found that their attrition rate was far less than those who were hired from other sources. The growth of the Indian retail industry meant that CCD, like other coffee chains, found it difficult to find good properties at reasonable prices. Most Indian retailers, whether they sold coffee, clothing or electronics, had similar space requirements and competed with each other for the same space. They can't afford to pay very high rentals. If the rental to revenue ratio goes above 20%, it would cause a great trouble. As a result, the company sometimes entered into agreements with the property owners to pay a discounted rent or a percent of its cafe revenue, whichever was higher. Given the growing opportunities in Indian retail, CCD, like other rental chains, also faced store level attrition and attracting and retaining the right talent was a challenge. Today, retaining, training and motivating people at those level is a biggest challenge. They pay their employees around 8,000 to 13,000 rupees a month, but some other retailers pay them a lot more. Then they try to sell their employees their growth story and give opportunities for rapid promotions. Keeping consumers engaged was another challenge, unlike the restaurant business where customers visit every month or two. Many of the CCD's customers visit three times or four times a week. The cafe business is a bit like the fashion business, where we have to follow the latest trends. Earlier, they would probably afford to refresh their menus every two or three years, but market focuses are changing so now they need to do this every quarter in order to remain relevant. Finally, keeping the stores busy throughout the day was another challenge. Most Indians consumed their first beverage at home along with breakfast and received another beverage at work free. So they ventured to cafes only in the afternoon when they were ready for a break. As a result, most cafes in India did not do well or a very little business until 11 a.m. unless they are located in the transportation hubs. CCD tried offering breakfast in order to draw more customers into its store in the mornings, but executives found that culturally this wasn't working. In October 2012, Starbucks long-awaited launch finally happened. It opened a spectacular 4,500 square feet flagship store in South Mumbai with a distinctly Indian design. In its opening week, the store attracted enormous media coverage and a long queue of customers. Of course, CCD was watching closely. CCD executives estimated that the new flagship store was generating around 2,000 US dollars to 4,000 US dollars per day compared to 2,000 US dollars at CCD's best store. The initial reaction to Starbucks was overwhelming, 
the press coverage was massive and the average waiting time stretching to over half an hour. CCD management was not surprised that Starbucks international appeal would work to the company's advantage. As one CCD executive explained that Indians have a tremendous curiosity of foreign brands. They like to seek out and experiment with any new brand that enters the country. The retail industry currently grabs major headlines in the country, which also helps in increasing awareness. At the same time, others felt that the curiosity about Starbucks might be short-lived. Next, CCD management believed it was too early to assess Starbucks' likelihood of success. After only six months and 11 stores opened, anything could happen. While the most CCD executive felt that Starbucks India would face many challenges, they also recognized the Starbucks would be a tough competitor. Tata, for example, was an excellent partner for Starbucks. In addition to the many premium locations it could offer Starbucks, Tata was well connected, which allowed it to open stores quicker than other foreign brands could. Since Tata was also a large coffee producer, it gave Starbucks the ability to offer a large local coffee brand rather than an imported coffee at a higher price. Starbucks' initial pricing for coffee was aggressive. Starbucks, which prized itself on high service standards, brought its global service practices to India and offered twice the pay level of CCD. In fact, in just six months, 40 people, perhaps 15 to 17 percent of Starbucks Indian staff, were poached from CCD with the lure of their high salaries. However, Starbucks had not succeeded in poaching any of CCD's management talent, despite calls from headhunters. CCD's larger scale offered much bigger management job opportunities than Starbucks. Going forward, service level were one of the CCD's biggest challenges. A major problem for Starbucks in India will be maintaining service levels. The kind of people who serve at Starbucks in the US or Europe are vastly different from the kind of people who serve in India. Providing great service in 10 stores may be relatively easy. How about 100, 200 or 300 stores? Will they be able to maintain high service levels in Indian cities? at all point of time? That's a very big question. Going forward, CCD should improve both its food and beverage breadth and quality, upgrade interiors and improve service level through greater training. In addition, CCD was big enough in 2013 that it could start spending to build its brand. For the first time ever, CCD would spend about $3 million for advertising. In addition, all new stores would be larger and company planned to upgrade their existing 150 stores this year of 2013. The real debate was whether this was sufficient, but the CCD management said that they could easily respond. Instead of 3% of CCD stores being squares and lounges, maybe CCD should raise the number of the squares and lounges to 25% or 35% of the portfolio, then they would do it. This would mean converting more cafes into lounges as well as building more lounges and squares. Instead of upgrading 150 stores per year, maybe upgrade 200 or 300 stores per year, and they will do that as well. Instead of spending only $3 million on advertising, double or triple brand spending, but if CCD want to take the more aggressive approach, it could not wait too long. Thank you everyone for watching this video. We'll see you soon with another interesting case study.